Here is an add-on to the previous video that was all about measuring speed and wow and flutter in cassette decks. If you have not seen the previous video, link in the video description, make sure to watch that first because this video is not going to make any sense to you otherwise. I have the Akai GX75 back up and running, playing the test tone cassette we recorded a couple of days ago, and it's all hooked up to the leader cassette checker once again. And uh, one annoying thing that I noticed, and I'm not going to hide this from you, uh, let's double check the zero adjustment, and that is accurate. If I now switch to a speed check, as you can see, the Akai is having a slow day today. That's not as accurate as I was hoping, so... That's really annoying because now all the people telling me that I have to use a real test tone cassette will feel proven right. But, well, here is a deal. You go ahead and send a real test tone cassette to me, for free, obviously, and then we can all be happy ever after. Anyway, looking at the wow and flutter, this was the other question that came up in the previous video. Does the reading change between monitoring the recording and playing it back later on? And the answer is no, not really. I have been starting and stopping and fast-forwarding and rewinding the cassette to make sure that the existing, the recorded wow and flutter pattern and the wow and flutter pattern that is added during playback, don't get into a constellation that allows for destructive or constructive interference. Um, but uh, even with doing all that, you can see the reading is still about the same as we've been getting in the first video. It's hovering around 0 0.06 and 0 0.08 with the cassette having been recorded in this cassette deck, you have to divide by 2, so we're still hovering around between 0.03 and 0.04% measured according to DIN. Now, the other thing that I wanted to find out is how does this cassette checker compare to the software WOW and Flutter meter? Here it is, and I have made sure to set it up correctly, so we got DIN selected there, and, well, level has gone up a little bit now, but uh, I have this set so that it doesn't overdrive the program. Now, the frequency reading, as you can see, that is a bit low, just like it is on the cassette checker, so that seems to work. And also this peak animation is uh, surprisingly close to the meter on the cassette checker. The readings and the overall behavior of the two meters is remarkably similar. So, as you can see also down here, of course, it's a bit more difficult to read because uh, it's fluctuating quite a bit more, but uh, we can see, see the 0 0.06 right there, and there was, I just saw 0 0.08. Now, the annoying part that I'm noticing is this right here, RMS. This gives a ridiculously low value, and I'm not sure, is that part of the DIN specification, or is this something that the creator of this piece of software came up with? because obviously the leader WOW and Flutter meter doesn't have a display like that. And as you can see, of course now this is going to go into a screensaver. <laughs> uh, as you can see, this value is much, much lower. 0 0.03, 0 0.04, and divided by 2, as we can do because the cassette was recorded in this deck, the wow and flutter recorded on the cassette is uh, divided by two, so, well, what is that? 0 0.015 or 0 
So now somebody said that uh, this cassette deck should be capable of producing much lower wow and flutter than what I had been measuring. Well, there you go. If you look at this number, it's nice and low. It's very low. So that is interesting to know. And uh, unfortunately, this poses a bit of a problem because there is a certain crowd in the comments that is trying to turn wow and flutter measurement into some sort of bizarre competition. And it's basically, if your wow and flutter numbers are not sufficiently low, in their opinion, your job at repairing the cassette deck was no good. I have been uh, getting into trouble with these people previously because uh, I was refusing to take part in their competition and wasn't measuring wow and flutter in my videos, wasn't giving them the numbers they needed to turn against me. Now, most of these people have now been blocked because they've been getting on my nerves, but this is, of course, a problem. If, uh, if anybody else uses this software Wow and Flutter meter and gets this fabulously low RMS number, and I, in my videos, use this Wow and Flutter meter that gives the peak value that looks a lot higher than this number, that is a problem. In a way, you could say that is unfair because, well, other people using the software meter are getting lower numbers than I'm getting using a real meter. So either I have to use the software Wow and Flutter meter despite having a real one, or I will have to uh, put a great big sticker onto the dial of this real wow and flutter meter saying that this is a peak value and not this uh, strange RMS value that uh, the software wow and flutter meter shows you. So that's some more food for thought and I'm looking forward to reading your comments and your thoughts about this whole thing. Thank you for watching.